Not Reconciled is the first feature film by uh, Jean-Marie Straub and uh, Daniel Vier, and it's an adaptation of a novel by Heinrich Böll called Billiards at Half Past Nine. Like the novel, the film comprises several different time frames. It's essentially a series of uh, flashbacks that go from the modern day, from the 1960s, back to the time of the First World War and the 1930s in Germany. But unlike the fairly classically composed novel that lets readers know with appropriate transitions when the passages between time frames are taking place, the first shot of the film is extremely brief. It shows a man playing billiards and a young boy in a bellhop's uniform. The, the man says, uh, what would you like me to tell you? And with a very quick dissolve, we jump what turns out to be back to the 1930s. Visually, there are no artifacts of the 1930s. We figure it out from other cues. But one thing that Straub and VA are trying to tell us, and this is a device that is repeated frequently throughout the film, is that, in effect, history is now. They condense the different time frames of the film without transitional devices in order to emphasize that history is alive, that certain elements of German history are constants. The story is a multi-generational story centered on one family, the Femel family. The oldest member, the grandfather, is Heinrich Femel, who before World War I became a famous architect for designing and constructing an abbey near Cologne. His son, Robert, was good friends in high school in the 1930s with a young man named Schrella. Uh, Schrella belonged to a religious sect called the Lambs and was persecuted for it. He was tortured and left Germany. Robert Famel was subjected to the same torture and was also taken out of Germany uh, by the same man, but not before he became betrothed to Schrella's sister, Edith. In the present time, Robert Famel is the man playing billiards. Heinrich Famel is the grandfather who has an architectural office and who is married to a woman, Johanna, who, when she was young in the film, is played by Daniel Vie. Johanna was fiercely opposed to German militarism. She says, the Kaiser is a fool. And when she says it publicly during a concert of Bach's music, she and her husband have trouble with the law. Um, and she ended up interned in an insane asylum. In the modern day, Johanna is the person who carries out the decisive act of violence at the end of the film. Robert Famel, the son of Heinrich, uh, who went into exile, came back to Germany after a, an agreement negotiated by his parents and became an expert in demolitions. So where his father was a builder, Robert Famel was a destroyer. And during the war, he was called upon to destroy buildings in the name of Field of Fire, in other words, in order to give the German army clear way in which to shoot at Allied troops. And one of the buildings he destroyed was his father's abbey. Letzte war die Abteil St. Anton, die mein Vater erbaut hatte. Die lag genau zwischen zwei Armeen, einer deutschen und einer amerikanischen. Ich besorgte der deutschen Armee ihr Schussfeld, das sie gar nicht brauchte. 
The third generation of females, represented in the film by a young man named Joseph, is an architecture student who seems to have lost interest in building, but who nonetheless has a distinct interest in architecture. And he and his girlfriend go to meet his father and grandfather at the abbey, which has subsequently been reconstructed. Die anderen sagten, um Gottes Willen, das können wir doch nicht tun. Da ist noch der Rest eines Fenstersturzes aus dem 16. Jahrhundert und da noch der Teil einer Kapelle aus dem 12. Und er warf die Schwarzkreide hin und sagte, gut, machen Sie, was Sie wollen, aber dann ohne mich. Und sie sagten, aber lieber Herr Fähme, Sie sind unser bester Sprengspezialist, Sie können es nicht im Stich lassen. Und er sagte, aber ich lasse Sie im Stich, wenn ich auf jeden Hühnerschau aus der Römerzeit Rücksicht sich nehmen muss. Sprengen Sie und schaffen Sie Luft. One odd fact about this film is how beautiful it is. Uh, for a film that is constructed on a premise of political anger, that juggles such a large amount of complex information in such a small span of time, Straub and Vie film it splendidly, in a splendidly modern and oblique way. The angles in this film are works of art. It's filmed with a degree of precision that few directors in the history of cinema have ever succeeded in matching. There's something fragmented and abstracted about the compositions in the film. It's almost as if they were declaring that in such a time of political crisis, precision of thought and precision of view are equally necessary. That events couldn't be filmed just any old way. There was one precise angle of view that would be revelatory. And even if putting them together required a process of abstraction, it was a mental work that it would be necessary to do in order to reach appropriate historical, political, factual conclusions. Du musst mir verzeihen, Robert. Ich konnte es nicht mehr ertragen. Ich musste zu Dröscher gehen, um für dich Amnestie zu erwirken. One of the most striking sequences in the film is the mother's long monologue. Because the mother is in something like a sanitarium. She speaks with Robert about events in the past as if they were very recent. And so when she speaks with Robert about what it took for her to negotiate his return to Germany, you might think that he's just returned and she's explaining to him you know, on the day of his return how this was managed. Whereas in fact she's talking about events that happened decades in the past. Actually as Richard Roud in, a, in probably the first book written about Straub in the late 1960s made clear, this woman who is ostensibly insane is in her supposedly crazed belief that history is now the sanest of them all. <laughs> Komm, wir wollen die Litanei des Weißen noch abbeten, uns den Jahre erinnern, als wir draußen im Lessenzentrum. Ich habe Angst, Alter. Nicht einmal 35 und nicht 42 habe ich mich so fremd unter den Menschen gefühlt. And it's this parade of German war veterans that sets off in her the idea that she needs to take action. The idea of celebrating the veterans of, you know, Germany's World War II. Germany's World War I strikes her as you know, radically offensive. And her husband, Heinrich, is standing next to her and she's trying to decide who to shoot. And she's looking at one person on horseback, but Heinrich says to her, you know, the person you might want to shoot is that guy over there who is your grandson's future executioner, meaning a politician or official who's, who is remilitarizing Germany. And the film's denouement is an act of violence that parallels an act of violence that took place during the 1930s, during the Third Reich, and that the film suggests is as appropriate a response to the modern regime in post-war West Germany as it was under Hitler. Uh -huh.